Welcome everyone. Glad you could join us wherever you are around the world. Now we have a, a really big audience and there's a lot of people here that are new and maybe they don't know too much about me, too much about exopolitics. So I thought I'd spend a few minutes just with a, an introduction. Now my background was a university professor. Up until 2001 I worked at American University in Washington DC. I was a full-time teacher and researcher in international peace and conflict resolution. Now one of my colleagues at the time was a professor from Palestine, uh, Professor Muhammad Abu Nima, a very great gentleman. Uh, and I remember around 1999, 2000, we had a big debate, I guess. And, and he was telling me that, well, if you wanted to understand what was happening in Palestine and Israel, you, you needed to understand what was happening with the alternative media. You need to look at the alternative media. And at the time, I was, a, as I said, a full-time professor. I had no idea what he was talking about. I mean, as far as I was concerned, the media was the, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, CNN, NBC, ABC, the conventional. And to my mind, these were the best in the business. These were the people that sent reporters into the field. They did the field work and they knew what was going on. So if they said something was happening in Palestine or in Israel or in Russia or anywhere else around the world, you know, that was the way things were really happening. And these guys were so smart or so well ex uh, researched and experienced that the stuff that they were writing was very descriptive, matter of fact explanations of what was going on in the world. So I really believe that. Up until 2001, and then in May of 2001, I had my red pill experience. I watched the Disclosure Project press conference organized by uh, Dr. Stephen Greer. And that blew my world apart because I had no idea that this was going on, that extraterrestrial life was visiting us. I suspected or I knew that extraterrestrial life existed, but I didn't think that they were visiting us and that this was being covered up. And so I got red-pilled and I realized that I was really wrong in that debate I had with uh, uh, the good professor Abu Nima, that he was right. That if you want to understand what's really going on, you need to cons consult the alternative media. And that the mainstream media is, is really part of a massive cover-up. And I only learned that in 2001. And maybe others are learning that they're going through their process of coming to a very similar conclusion. And I'm sure many of you that are here have arrived at a, at a similar conclusion. Some of you maybe are curious, you're here out of just wanting to learn what is exopolitics all about? Who is this guy Sala talking about extraterrestrials visiting us and there being a massive cover-up? And, and so for those that are new, I do welcome you. And, and my best advice to anyone that is new truly is to keep an open mind to the information that I'm about to present. And uh, if there's one thing that you can keep in mind that can help you in your exopolitics research was something that I remember hearing from a, an outstanding researcher around that time, 2001, 2002, it was Richard Hoagland. And he said something very profound, and it's stuck with me ever since. And hopefully it sticks with you. He said, when it comes to this topic concerning extraterrestrial life, exopolitics, UFOs, he said, the lie is different at every level. The lie is different at every level. And you need to really keep that in mind, because in the 20 plus years now that I've been doing this research, that I've been studying and writing about exopolitics, he is absolutely correct because the lie is different at every level and the mass media are part of the lie. And so we need to unravel that. But first I want to begin uh, by addressing maybe those that are more academically oriented, those that are still maybe working in a university or working with the mass media or with a think tank in terms of 
what it is that shifts their perceptions or their understanding of what is happening in the world around us. I'm going to begin my webinar presentation by looking at this information that was first discussed by Thomas Kuhn and he talked about the structure of scientific revolutions and he appreciated that the way science advances is, is very slow it's, it's a series of peaceful interludes punctuated by intellectually violent revolutions and so that means things move very very slowly and then all of a sudden there's a violent revolution in terms of thought in terms of what, what it is, what is really going on where one conceptual worldview is replaced by another and so things move very very slowly until all of a sudden there's this revolution in scientific thought and I think we're at that point and that's really what I'm going to be discussing this revolution and he called it a paradigm shift and paradigm shifts are new facts that are discovered and these new facts lead to different theories to explain the facts and so with these new theories there's competition for who is able to best explain these new facts and so one accepted theory becomes the new paradigm and science follows afterwards and then you reach this point where there's a crisis and we're kind of at that point now with uh, the scientific mainstream new facts and theories create the need for a new paradigm, a new way of looking at things so when it came to the topic of UFOs, extraterrestrial life up until the year 2010, I mean it's hard to believe but scientists were saying that there really is no conclusive evidence of planets in other solar systems. It's hard for us to believe now, but up until around 2010, that was the scientific viewpoint. Then the Kepler Space Telescope changed that. It began detecting and confirming the existence of these exoplanets. And so the existence of these exoplanets was a new fact that helped bring about this paradigm shift and the, the, the amount of exoplanets that were discovered and then confirmed through the Kepler Space Telescope really led to a very powerful change in the mainstream scientific community and you can see from this graph here that the very first exoplanet was uh, theoretically uh, deduced back here, as far back as 1995-96 uh, there were a number of telescopes that came up with data but nothing really conclusive until the Kepler Space Telescope was, dis uh, was deployed and then around 2009-2010 uh, you can see uh, the Kepler Space Telescope was confirming a lot of exoplanets and then around 2014 there was an explosion and, and this was when there was so many hundreds of exoplanets detected and confirmed. Now the confirmation of these exoplanets led to a paradigm shift in the scientific community and this led to uh, very famous scientists such as Professor Stephen Hawking making statements along the lines to my mathematical brain the numbers alone make thinking about aliens perfectly rational. So he's talking about the numbers provided by the Kepler Space Telescope where the number of exoplanets meant that talking about extraterrestrial life was now rational because up until 2010 if you talked about UFOs, extraterrestrial life, you know, you were not within the scientific mainstream, you were actually booted out and, and that actually happened to me I, I was actually booted out of academia because in 2000 and, um, Three, 2004, I've started writing and, and publishing my research on exopolitics and, and that led to my academic superiors saying that uh, no, this is conspiracy theory, this has no place within a university, that's what I was told back then. So um, six years later Stephen Hawking writes that the discovery of exoplanets means that it's perfectly rational to talk about extraterrestrial life. And he went on, if aliens ever visit us I think the outcome would be 
much as when Christopher Columbus first landed in America, which didn't turn out very well for the Native Americans. So that was very significant because what Stephen Hawking was saying then, back in 2010, was that it's perfectly legitimate to talk about what happens if extraterrestrials arrive, what is going to happen to our civilization? Are we going to be extinguished? Are we going to be replaced? Are we going to thrive? These are perfectly legitimate questions in 2010, whereas a decade earlier, if anyone was making these kinds of statements, you would have been ridiculed and dismissed from your academic position. That was all brought about because of the discovery of exoplanets. So now, something else is happening. This is the James Webb Space Telescope, which was just deployed in December of 2021. It was sent out, and the James Webb Space Telescope is a hundred times more powerful than the Hubble Telescope, and it can conduct detailed atmospheric study of exoplanets and even detect biosignatures. So there's a, an academic paper from Cornell University that says that detecting biosignatures in the atmosphere of gas dwarf planets with the James Webb Space Telescope is viable, that you can actually detect whether or not there are trace gases or events happening in the atmosphere of a planet that is observed through the James Webb Telescope, of course happening in another solar system, that that is something that can confirm extraterrestrial life is real. So the James Webb Space Telescope has led to, has brought us to this position now where it has been deployed and the first images are, going, are expected in the summer of this year. So it can detect biosignatures and it can provide data or new facts for scientists that extraterrestrial life is real. And the detection of biosignatures is anticipated by, by NASA. So let me move over here because this detection has led to a very, or this prospective detection of biosignatures has led to NASA consulting some very unusual people for what is going to happen if biosignatures are detected in other solar systems. Theologians. Okay, there you go. NASA is consulting with theologians preparing for official discovery of extraterrestrial life. NASA understands that at some point biosignatures are going to be detected through the Webb Space Telescope and that the groundwork needs to be laid for how to announce this kind of discovery to the general public. And NASA has begun consulting with theologians. And so there's been two dozen theologians who have been asked to explore how humans would react to news of intelligent alien life. So what that's telling us, and this is you know, addressing those that are a kind of maybe more part of the mainstream scientific community. What, what these announcements tell us is that NASA is anticipating an announcement very soon that the James Webb Space Telescope has detected biosignatures. So in that article that addresses NASA consulting these theologians, it's titled, Between Heaven and Earth, Where Do Aliens Fit In? That's the question that NASA hopes theologians at the Center for Theological Inquiry in Princeton, New Jersey can answer in a recent effort to understand how humans will react to news that intelligent life exists on other planets. So NASA's getting ready. University of Cambridge religious scholar, the Reverend Dr. Andrew Davison, is one of the 24 theologians enlisted to help with the project. So NASA's getting ready. They know biosignatures are going to be detected as early as July of this year. That data's going to start coming in, and at some point they're going to do this. Now, you have to ask, uh, 
Is this because uh, there is an understanding that these biosignatures are known to exist out there and the James Webb Space Telescope is, is going to detect what is already being discovered through classified military telescopes? Because there are classified military telescopes out there. I mean, the James Webb Space Telescope, as advanced as it is, it's at least a decade, if not two decades, behind what classified military space telescopes are able to detect out there. So by NASA saying that they are consulting theologians to get ready for a future announcement that biosignatures have been detected, you can be pretty sure that NASA knows, or those senior in the NASA hierarchy, know that the biosignatures are out there and that the Webb Telescope is going to detect them pretty soon. So this is going to lead to a paradigm shift where all the data, all of the information that's been presented for decades now concerning extraterrestrial life is going to be given new, new blood or, or new attention. All these stories that have been floating around for decades, for years, are now...